Today you guys are going to be reviewing um, some fraction rules, things that you learned in elementary school and reviewed in seventh grade math. There's two pieces of paper on the table. You need to have both of them. Um, and here's the order that you want to put them in. This is going to be the cover. Set the cover aside for just a minute. On the other side of the cover, you will see adding subtracting like fractions and dividing fractions by an integer. The paper that you want is the one that says multiplying first. And I want you to fold that down so adding and subtracting is right above it, just like that, and put a crease in it. And then if you take this paper and put it right above where it says dividing, and then fold this down, you're going to have a little flip book. If you take your stapler and just staple it like this, and you now have a flip book. Please put your name and your class period on here. This will be going into your spirals, but not today, and I don't want you to lose it, so we can make sure we can get it back to you. Today, other than putting the booklet together, your task is to work on this flat flap for adding and subtracting. So let's fold that back and take a look at what's inside. First, let's focus on the adding and subtracting like fractions. And I'd like you to also be looking at the number line that you made yesterday for fractions. Because even though we didn't do fifths and sevenths on our number line, I want you to think about what this would look like on a number line. So if I have zero and one, and I'm going to be showing my number line for three-fifths. This would be one-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths. Plus one more fifth. And how many fifths would that be total? And you would shade in these four. Try doing the same thing for example two, but this time with subtraction. You're going to show the sevens and you're going to go up five, and then you're going to come back and cross out two. So your number line is going to go backwards and then shade in the model with the, what that would look like. When we're adding and subtracting unlike fractions, we need to get the common denominator. So when I look at this one, I see 3 and 9. And let's do an example that's similar but different. What if I was adding 2 fourths plus 3 eighths? I would need to get a common denominator. 4 can turn into 8, so I'm going to do 2 fourths times 2 over 2. Remember that identity property. If I'm multiplying by 1, I'm not changing the size, I'm just changing the way it's cut up. And we're going to now have this separated into 8's as well. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. And I can go back up and change this to say 4 8's plus 3 8's. Because I took this and converted it to this, and now I've moved it to here. And that would look like 7 8's. And can you show that on your number line? and using your model. Well, on a model, I would end up with 4 eighths shaded and 3 eighths shaded. And what do those two look like together? I would have a total of 7 eighths. I'm going to challenge you in this space here to see if you can show what that would look like on a number line. You can either use one number line or two. And then try the same down here with one half minus negative seven eighths. Don't forget this subtraction really means that there's an invisible plus sign here. I'm going to rewrite this as one half minus one times negative 7 over 8 
because there's a plus sign right there. Remember, whenever we have those subtraction problems with another subtraction, we're really multiplying a negative one. Negative times negative becomes a positive, so you're gonna rewrite this, so this is a positive, and then worry about changing the denominators. Okay. Next time we come in, we will work on multiplying and dividing.